So I would invite you just to settle in where you are. Allow your eyes to gently close if that feels right. And allow your body just to anchor in the spot that you have called your own for these few minutes. Just let those sit bones really ground down. If you're lying down, just let your spine lengthen and your back become really secure on the ground. So that no matter what position or posture you have found for yourself, it feels safe and secure and stable. And then use that stability as a way to find your connection to your breath. When we feel grounded and stable, the distractions of the world have far less power. And we can really come to this place and just focus on the in-breath and the out-breath. And the distractions are still there as you begin to breathe slowly. But again, their influence over us becomes less. And that truly is one of the gifts of this practice. So just continue breathing in and breathing out. And breathing in and breathing out and finding even more grounding in your spot that you have found for yourself right now. And before we head into our time together collectively, I would ask that each of us just affirm yourself for pausing the busyness of this day and showing up. Sometimes we feel silly telling ourselves that we've done a good job, but just maybe there is a soft smile that comes to your face or a softening of your shoulders. This warm feeling in your heart and just feel the affirmation of recognizing that you showed up. And we're on a journey across these few weeks together of discovering joy no matter what someone's New Year's resolutions are, no matter what someone's intentions are, I would guess that all 8 billion people who inhabit this earth want joy. We go about finding joy in so many ways. But we're relying on the words and the teachings of the Dalai Lama across these days as we discover the pillars of joy. It's not a matter of just letting go of sadness and sorrow and making yourself happy. There are actual things, pillars, the same way that you are grounded into the seat that you found your place in tonight. You can ground these pillars as well. And then they become these guideposts toward us discovering joy. On day one, the pillar that we shared was perspective of understanding that there are tough days, there are tough moments, there are tough seasons of life, but our perspective does not have to be hardened just because we're going through tough times. And then we looked at this pillar of humility, this idea of seeing the oneness of humanity the singleness of purpose that we all have on this earth and being humbled by that, that second guidepost, that second pillar. And today's pillar feels a little lighter. And when I first read this many years ago and the words of the Dalai Lama, I thought, oh my goodness, is he serious? And then the more I read and I watched the smile on his face and in interviews he talked about it, I realized he is just as serious about this pillar as he is about all the rest. And this third pillar of joy is the pillar of humor. And if you've ever seen an interview with the Dalai Lama or you've ever looked at a, an article that maybe has his picture, there is this softened smile almost always on his face. And he comes from a land that has experienced extreme turmoil and stress for generations. But yet there's this softened gaze on his face. And it's a reflection of what is in his heart, not a reflection of the circumstances that he experiences on an everyday basis. And so as we delve into this idea of humor, 
being one of our pillars of joy, I would invite you just for a second, just think, when was the last time that you really laughed? Like the kind of laugh that causes your belly to hurt. You get a cramp in your side, your face starts to get tired because you've just laughed so much. Just pause and think, when was the last time that I really laughed? And for some of us, it's been recent. For some of us, it's been a while. But I'd like us to go on this journey for these few minutes just to explore this pillar of humor as a way for us to cultivate joy in our lives. Again, no matter what it is we're going through, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the situations are, finding joy anyway. There's a statement from the Dalai Lama that says that laughter is this way of connecting two people together. And so think about it. That memory that you just conjured up in your mind that you recalled, it was an expression of something in your heart. Something caused you to just laugh. No inhibitions, no thinking about what you were doing. You just expressed yourself through laughter. And when you do that, you are showing to the world your heart. You're showing something internal that you've expressed in this external way. And when you do that with someone else, when you have this collective expression of joy, this laughter, two people, a group of people sitting, holding their bellies, holding their sides, and just laughing. In those moments, our egos are set to the side. Our selfishness that we all have as a part of us is forgotten for a bit. Our worries, our sorrows, our burdens, they're not at the front of our mind for those few seconds. We just laugh. And when you do that in the collective space with other people, one other person or a group, you really are creating connection between humanity. And kind of like when I introduced humility, I don't think it's an accident, the order of how he's given this to, these to us. First, he told us you've got to make sure that your perspective is set that you may feel sorrow or you may feel anger, but your perspective doesn't change. We cultivate that perspective every time we sit for meditation. We do it collectively, you do it individually on your own. We do it at all times of the day. We're cultivating perspective. And then we humble ourselves through this pillar of humility and realize we really are the same. That the things like the color of our skin and our language and our belief systems, those are secondary to the primary thing that joins us together, which is humanity. And that is a humbling, humbling thought. And then he asks us to express what we're feeling inside through laughter through these smiles that you don't even think about, they just come. You show your heart to someone, they show their heart to you. And again, ego is set to the side and we feel connection. And I would tell you that it is possible to feel that laughter, those big, silly smiles even when you're going through really tough times. Because those things are an expression of what's so deep within you that even the sorrow and the tough times can't touch it. That's your joy. And I wanna just pause for a second and let each of us just kinda of let that just sit for a second. 
Just see if any reflections come to mind. See if you can allow your body just to stay rested and calm. And I know for some of us, the distractions will come. The reminders of what you're walking through will come back to the forefront of your mind. But as sure as you're hanging onto that seat where you are seated, hang onto the breath as your anchor and go back to that picture that you had just seconds ago where you remembered what it was like to laugh. Let's just pause, reflect, feel, He goes on with this idea of this pillar of humor and he turns it back on us. And he says, an expression of our humility will come in our ability to laugh at ourselves. We're so good at being critical of ourselves. We're so good at doubting ourselves and our abilities. What if we invested just as much effort in laughing at ourselves, giving ourselves a break, laughing things off and realizing it just is not that important. And then all of a sudden, the people that you're with see you doing that and there's another connection made. Because you can't do those things if ego's in the way. So once again, we set the ego to the side. We laugh at ourselves and we move on. And the people in our lives see it. They appreciate it. And someday, maybe they'll be able to do it too, just from our example. And then you will get to play a part in cultivating the joy within them. So what I'd like us to do in these next few minutes of quiet is just think and reflect on this day or the last couple of days of a time when you just should have given yourself a break. You should have just laughed it off and moved on and not been so hard and so critical of yourself. And so whatever comes to mind, don't make a list. Just the first thing that comes to mind across the last 24 hours or so. Think of it differently in these few minutes of quiet that we have. Give yourself a break. Imagine you're looking in the mirror at yourself and you're just saying, you know what? It's just not that big deal, big of a deal. It's just not that important. And you really are doing a really good job. You really are enough. So across these next just couple minutes of silence that we've got, let's reframe whatever that thing was. And let's give ourselves a little laughter, a little break a little reset as we cultivate this pillar of humor.
I hope that you can give yourself grace. I hope that you can give yourself a break. And I hope that you can continue to cultivate this pillar of humor. It's going to look different from situation to situation and day to day. But it truly is a way for you to express those deep, deep parts of your heart to yourself and to the world. And as we prepare to close our time, I thought about this quote from Viktor Frankl, this incredibly well-spoken and often quoted survivor of the Holocaust. A man who has experienced some of the most dire situations that humanity has ever gone through in our history. And he says, the one thing that they could never take away from me was my ability to choose. My ability to choose my response in each moment. And yes, there were moments that were horrific. But there were moments when I went inside and I made a choice to choose joy. I made a choice to look internally instead of being overwhelmed by the external circumstances around me. We encounter people every day who knowingly and sometimes unknowingly are attempting to rob us of our joy. But we have the choice. That is our power. So no matter what the situations are that we encounter, let's take the pillar of humor given to us by the Dalai Lama. And let's take the lesson given to us by Viktor Frankl that we have the right to choose and no one can ever take that away. Let's choose to let our smile and our laughter be an expression of what is in our heart, not an expression of what's around us. Because if we let it be an expression of that, the laughter and the smile will seem really far away. And that pillar won't begin to be cultivated the way that we need it to be. Remember your perspective. Feel the humility of each of us being a part of one big humanity. And then don't forget to laugh at yourself, at life, at the big important things and the things that are so inconsequential. Knowing that as you do, you are cultivating a spirit of joy. Namaste.